everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Deep Thoughts. And today we are talking about episode 14 of Vinland Saga, The Light of Dawn. Before we begin, though, I do want to let you all know that if you would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Vinland Saga video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. Now then, with that said, we got two things in particular that we got to talk about today. We gotta talk about the group trying to find something to believe in, and we gotta talk about the raiding of the village, which is the main thing I, I think everybody's gonna walk away from this episode with, because it's a lot. Before I, I get into that though, I do want to give a quick shout out to the, the show's opening, the new, the new OP from Man With A Mission, and it is friggin' dope. I talked about this last week, but I have to reiterate that yes, this is still my OP of the season, Things have come close, but it's it's hard because it it's man with a mission nothing really tops man with a mission The visuals are dope the, the song by man with a mission is great It's not my favorite man with a mission song, but it's up there it this is you can't have a man with a mission OP and not have it be top dog I'm sorry just bottom line it is what it is and uh, I, I guess we'll start with what I had assumed was going to be the most the the or at least the the thing that i would end up talking the longest about in this week's episode once it started because this happens like right at the beginning and that's the group trying to find something to believe in in particular the two brothers the two blonde viking dudes that we we see in ashlad's group and the priest now they have this conversation about what love is and it's them discussing what they think love is whether that's romantic love or like the love between brothers in this case the two vikings are talking about the love that they know Know, which is them entering into battle side by side they got each other's back they they wreck shop and they know that they can trust the other one so that must be what love is and the priest basically because he's not familiar with with combat on the battlefield is like i, I mean i guess like he's not impressed by it doesn't mean anything to him and he's not really buying what the brothers are selling in terms of this is what love is. Love is going into battle with your brother at your side and the two of you slaughter innocent people together. Like to, to, the, to the priest, that's not love. And so the two brothers are still trying to grapple with this idea of like, what the hell is this priest talking about? What is love? They want to know what love is. And the priest doesn't really have a good answer either because he, he can't really describe what he's looking for. And honestly, I doubt it's love that he's looking for because at, at the end of the day, I think what the priest is actually looking for is, well, A, another bottle of booze because they even bring up like, are you sure that you don't love, like, like love isn't the attachment you feel for booze because you seem to be glued to every bottle we find. And I mean, I guess I can kind of see from their point of view, like he must love booze, but even he says it's not that he loves booze. It's just the thing that he happens to enjoy and a, a pastime that he partakes in is constantly getting drunk. And I mean, if I were in Vinland Saga, I'd probably be doing the same thing because, oh my God, think about how mortifying this would be, especially when we get to the second half of the episode. But I think what the priest is looking for isn't quite love as much as it's either devotion or something to believe in. He's looking for faith. Now, that's just my interpretation. I'm sure other people are gonna be like, actually, in the manga, it's blah, 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 but I don't care. We're talking about the show here. And in my point of view, from what I'm seeing, it seems as though the characters, not just the priest, but the priest is the one that the show, this episode rather is focused on, but it seems like a big aspect of the show is finding something to put your faith into, some, something to believe in, especially in this episode where religion plays such a heavy focus, like the Christians in this episode. Everybody talks about God constantly in this episode and putting their faith in him because that's what good Christians do. And to me, I'm like, I, I mean, sure, if it makes you feel better, but it's, to, to me, I think this episode also has a lot to say about finding something to believe in, not necessarily being God, but just sort of anything. Especially since when the two brothers talk about Thor's, although they don't remember Thor's name, which I have a hard time believing, but they don't remember his name. The priest's reaction to Thor's and the story of Thor's and how he didn't he didn't use a sword because a true warrior has no need for a sword and how once they gathered everybody together they realized that nobody died. 
and that they this man took like a mountain of arrows and stood tall and just refused to to go into that good night until he knew that his kid was safe and and everything that thor's did in that moment and this is the only thing that they have said probably for days <laughs> given that they, they've been having this conversation over a course of episodes so likely this has been over the course of several days of them trying to figure out what love is or at least what it is that the priest is looking for and when they tell the priest the story when they regale him with the story of thor's the troll of jom or jom or whatever you pronounce that th that's the only time the priest actually has some sort of genuine reaction and I have to believe that it's because he knows, much like Ashla did, that Thor's is a, a leader you could follow, someone you could put your faith in, you can believe in him. And that's, again, that's just what I'm taking away. Yeah, I could be way off base, but I do think leadership and believing in things and believing in people and faith in general has become a very heavy theme. Like, they've all become heavy themes over the course of these last couple episodes, and even when I look back on past episodes of Inland Saga, it, it's been like one of the core themes of the show. But enough about that, I'm rambling at this point. Let's go ahead and move on to the big thing that I wanna talk about in this week's episode. The biggest thing, likely, that I think most people are gonna walk away from. And, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's intense, and that is the raiding of the village. But Jojo, we've seen them raid villages all the time. This isn't anything new. No, it is, though. This is, it, this is cruel in a way that Ashlad's gang has... We've seen them be cruel, but this is like... For some reason... No, I know why, but this is so much more grim than it's ever been, I think. I say I think, because this show can get pretty dark, man. But this was... This was intense. This was this was intense. And this is foreshadowed right at the beginning when we see the sort of trippy opening and we don't know who's speaking, but it's somebody having some sort of crisis of faith and we're not sure who it is right away. It turns out to be Anne, this character, who is one of the people who lived in the village that they raid. Now, I think one of the aspects that sells this so well is the sound design. And I'm sure that's going to be like, huh, what? But like, listen, this week's episode has some of the best sound design I think the show has had in its entire run. The howling of the winds, like, hit it. You can actually feel it almost. Like, you can feel how cold it is just by listening to the howling of the winds, the, the crunching of snow. And unfortunately, towards the end, you can hear the the squishing of flesh against steel and it is like i said it, it makes that scene grim because you realize just how dark this situation has gotten and it's it's not it's not just the sound design although it is brilliant it's also the visuals this is the most like foreboding heavy and all-around sort of oppressive that the show has been since the, like Ashlad basically they, they even say like my men have been to hell and back and this feels like the final circle of hell like it is just frozen over everything is oppressive and dark and cold and the visuals and the sound design sell it in such a good way and it only gets more grim once you start talking about the narrative implications of everything because yeah Ashlad's group charge into a village full of christians and they have this dinner conversation about god and, and all this and and it was it was interesting because Anne is this this innocent kid in all of this all, all she did that that like the thing that that she found so like blasphemous that she had done was she stole a ring she saw a pretty ring at the market or wherever it was and she couldn't help herself she had to have it so she stole it and you know that's that that's a sin so she felt as though with her family all praying she was starting to have sort of a, a crisis of faith like she's like but i stole this ring but i didn't like i felt elated to have it but like that's a sin i was tempted by the devil and th that's wrong but i like the ring and but i don't want to go to hell my whole family they, they they pray they're good christians they're gonna go to heaven they're gonna they're gonna go without me and it's it's only made that that line in particular of them of her saying like i'm gonna be the one who gets left behind hits so much harder by the end of the episode because poor Anne, she has this moment of like she, she's starting to question her faith and it only that question that crisis of faith only gets amplified when she sees the horror of this world and how cruel 
people can be. People like Ashlad's crew, who just show up, they they round up all the villagers, and they just slaughter them. Like civilians. E even Ragnar's like they were they're civilians, they're Christians, like like they're men, women, children. You can't do this. But Ashlad's like, if I don't, they'll freeze and starve to death. So I'm making a choice. And I don't want to hear anybody try to tell me that Ashlad's an anti-hero again. <laughs> I love Ashlad as a character, but this man's a villain. Like, point blank, straight up, I'm sorry, this dude's the antagonist of the show. He might be the one that we're following, but he's the bad guy. <laughs> it's just such an intense moment. It's it's the most intense. I, I was, sh like, really shaken by this episode in the best possible way, by the way. Don't think I'm trashing it. It was so horrific and yet so stunningly beautiful by the end. Like, like this oppressive violence is then broken up by this beautiful shot of Anne looking up at the clear night sky. Like the, 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 the storm has subsided, the winds calm down, and she looks up and she sees the sky and it looks like a matte painting. It moves too, like, which I was like, ooh, pretty. And it's this beautiful moment after some of like the most and, and it's funny because it's not a gory scene I, you guys know me i'm not a big gore hound I, it's not really my thing I, I used to be back in high school i was a big horror guy um i don't know how many of you guys know that but yeah back in high school i was like a big horror guy it was all into gore but now i can't my heart really can't take it i, I get sort of vomity um and it's not so much that the scene was like gory because it wasn't but it's just that the implications were so heavy so to have a moment like that followed by this beautiful, stunning shot where Anne just sort of breaks. Like she, she's, like her the, her questions of faith, like her crisis of faith just totally breaks her by the end. She just falls into the snow. And it just, it that that scene will haunt me. It's so good. And even the priest is, is left just staring at this, like staring at, at Ashlad, the man who's leading his troops, the man who his troops put faith in. And to the priest, Ashlad must look like the devil, I guess. It's it's such an intense moment. And again, like it's part of the reason why I find this show so fascinating because it's like lines aren't clear cut. Like again, I did say like Ashlad's the bad guy, but I understand the decisions he makes. I, I know why he does what he does and that's what makes a great antagonist. And it just, it's such a fascinating episode and I just, I loved it to pieces. Now with all that said, all my thoughts out there, I have to give this week's episode an S tier. I, I know it feels kind of sudden to have another S tier this early into the season, but this episode is flawless. I thought this was phenomenal. On that note, everybody, that just about wraps everything up. But before we go, as always, I want to give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier. Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, Ginkotaku, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Omni Garamond, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven, Tristan, and Veridan. Thank you all so much for your continued support over on Patreon, and hey, if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then by all means go ahead and check out that first link in the description to check out our Patreon page, see all the cool rewards you can get for as little as a dollar a month, and get access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord. But on that note, everybody, that's going to be a video, so I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already, so I ain't going to tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you are feeling stressed out today, then you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I will talk to you all again real soon.